Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Lumio Station. What's up, Lumio Station, and welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon Data Decks. In the second episode of the Aura season of the Pokemon Data Decks, we covered the Grass Fighting Type Breloom, and then I asked you guys which Pokemon you wanted to see this week. It was a choice of Crawdaunt and Wishcash, and Crawdaunt came out over the top, so you know, on top, whatever. So, now we need to choose Pokemon for next week. So I figured last week we covered Grass. This week we're covering water. We better cover fire next week. Now there aren't many fire types available in in the home decks, I guess, apart from Camera, which has a mega evolution, and Blaziken, which has a mega evolution. So I did choose one Pokemon that's in, introduced in home, but one was in home decks, but not introduced in home. We have Mag Cargo and Torquoise. Mag Cargo being Generation 2 and Torquoise being Generation 3, but both in the home decks. So, which one do you want me to cover next week? Put your vote down in the comment section below now, guys, to vote for which one you want to see next week, and the one that has the most votes, obviously, I'll be covering. Anyway, let's get started on Crawdont. Crawdont is a water dark type and is the rogue Pokemon. It's number 342 in the National Pokedex, as I said, being introduced in Generation 3. Crawdon stands at 3 foot 7 inches or 1.1 meters tall and weighs 72.3 pounds or 32.8 kilograms. It's in the water one and water free egg group, so not much diversity there, basically just a load of water, and the male female split is 50-50. Evolution wise, it evolves from Corphish, starting at level 30. That's yeah, pretty much that. Not much else to say there. It's it's a bit late evolving, but as soon as you get your Crawdon, Crawdon is very powerful, especially with the right ability, as we'll look at in a minute. Base stat wise, for Crawdon, we can see its highest base stat is attack at 120, then we get down to special attack at 190, no, just 90, then we get defense at 85, then further on down to health points at 63, ending up with special defense and speed both at 55. So you can tell it's a physical attacker. Special attack, while being reasonably high, its move pool special wise isn't very good. So we're just focusing on physical for Crawdon. In terms of defensive, they're not very high. Its defense is higher than its special defense, but they're both still low, reason well, still reasonably low at least. Its speed also is pretty low at 55, so that's a really it's a drawback to Crawdon. It's not very fast. If it was faster, it'd be in a much higher tier, but being only 55 there, it, it does struggle speed-wise, and having a special defense of only 55 as well doesn't really help it much. Looking at its abilities, it has three abilities available to it. The first one is Hyper Cutter, which prevents other Pokemon from lowering its attack stats. So basically it's like Clear Body, except it only works for attack stats, so it's not a brilliant ability. Although it is, because obviously you don't want your attack going down. But then again, if I had Clear Body, it'd be much better because it would, you know, no attack stat, no stats would be able to be reduced. But it's it's alright, but there are better ones. Then its second basic ability is a Shell Armor, which protects it from critical hits. This is Again, it's a useful ability, but it's not brilliant and useful, because Crawdon is not a defensive Pokemon, so critical hits aren't really going to be mattering too much. Obviously with Mega Slowbro, which has Shell Armor, it does matter a lot there, but here, it doesn't really at all. Its hidden ability, however, is where Crawdon really comes into its own. Without this, it wouldn't have the same effect, but with it, it is, it's fairly powerful. Adaptability powers up the moves of the same type as the Pokemon, so usually, with Stab, the same type attack bonus, you get a boost of... Uh, 1.5 times I think it is, if you use a attack of your own type, so for example Charizard, it gets a 1.5 times boost for fire and flying type attacks, so that makes sense because otherwise you get the same amount of power using, for example, a, I don't know, a Scold as well as a Flamethrower sort of thing. If you have two moves that have the same power without the, state, without the same type attack bonus, we'll do the same damage, which doesn't make any sense. That's why you always want to use the attack your Pokemon is a type of. So, adaptability, rather than having a same type attack bonus of 1.5 times, powers it up even more, making Crawdon really quite a powerful Pokemon, to be honest. It's really quite powerful. Um, a Pokemon with adaptability will do damage. Or will, will do damage. It goes from 1.5 times to 2 times. So you get double the power on your stab moves, which is very, very powerful indeed. And this is really where Crawdon gets the boost from and comes into its own. Well, that's ability, as I said, it wouldn't have the same effect it does. So, 
if we then look at Crawdon's typing, it's a Water Dark type, which is a half decent type, the same type of Sharpedo as well. But it's not it's not an amazing type, but it's reasonably good. It resists six types, which are Fire, Water, Ghost, Ice, Dark, and Steel. It's weak to five types, which are Grass, Electric, Fighting, Bug, and Fairy. It's immune to one type, which is Psychic, and it takes a neutral from the other six types, which are Normal, Flying, Poison, Rock, Ground, and Dragon. So, looking at it, it has six resistances and only five weaknesses, so it's actually winning there. And that's a decent number of re resistances as well. It can switch in on, on a reasonable amount of Pokemon, and obviously it's immune to Psychic as well. So add that onto resistances, just you know, to stuff you can switch in on. And you've got a reasonably good sort of lineup there. Uh, since Fire and water, well, water, at least, is a free common type. Um, whereas, for example, looking at the weaknesses, Bug is not that common, but it is reasonably common. So that's the only downside to the weaknesses. It does have a lot of common types in there. Grass, Electric, Fighting, and of course Fairy being in introduced in Generation 6. With the introduction of Fairy, actually, it's made Crawdon worse because obviously it's weak to Fairy, whereas it before it was not weak to Fairy. So that's the only trouble there. But generally, it's typing is good. As I mentioned, though, Crawdon's not really one for defense, so it's not like you need to bulk it out, bulk it out and sort of survive attacks, though. It's really just something that's there, I guess, if you guys understand what I mean there. Then, if we move on to look at the highlighted moves for Crawdaunt, obviously because we have adaptability, a lot of these moves are going to be our stab moves, water and dark type moves, but there are some other moves that can be useful on your Crawdaunt that aren't water or dark. First up we have, uh, again obviously because Auras has got some slightly different level upsets, particularly for home Pokemon, uh, the first level listed is going to be X and Y, second one is going to be Auras. So, at level 26 in X and Y, or level 23 in Auras, we have Knockoff. Now, Knockoff received a boost in Generation 6, as I mentioned several times before in this series, which makes Knockoff very, really very powerful. And I sort of, whereas before Knockoff was only used to get rid of the Pokemon's item, Knockoff can now pretty much be used as an attack. It can be used to do damage as well as get rid of the item, the item being a side effect, which is a very helpful side effect as well. So that's certainly a good move, a good choice to have on your Crawdon. Then at level 39 or level 26 in Auras, it can learn Night Slash, which is a more powerful dark type move and also has a higher critical hit ratio. So that does allow you, sort of, if you're going for the luck, going for the hacks, you can certainly go for the Night Slash there and try that out. Then we have a level 44 in X and Y or level 48. So whereas Knockoff and Night Slash were learned at lower levels, Crab Hammer is at a much higher level, or four levels higher in Auras. Uh, Crab Hammer, powerful water type move. Again, we're getting at the adaptability stab on that. It's going to do reasonable damage, but there are, in my opinion, better choices for your water type move out there. Then, at level 52 in an X and Y, or level 40 in Auras, so you learn it much earlier, whereas Crab Hammer is the other way. It's a bit confusing. Or, of course, TM75, we have Sword Stats, which is an all type move. It's going to boost your attack stat by two stages. And it's really going to it's really going to sort of power up crawl up there, especially with the adaptability stab, especially if you have a super effective move, and of course your sword stance plus two attack. And that's going to do a lot of damage. So being able to get sword stance up with a crawl on is actually a very very useful thing to do because it's obviously it's going to double your attack. Then at level 57 or level 43, we have a crunch, another powerful dark type move, slightly more powerful than night slash to my knowledge, uh, and has the chance to lower their defense however it hasn't got that higher critical hit ratio but crunch is still a reasonably powerful dark type move and obviously if it's lowering their defense every now and again it can help you break through some walls for example if, you know, make a slow bro uh, crunch is going to sort of slowly lower his defense and get it down sort of lower allowing you to slowly get through it but not obviously crawl up might not be the best choice to take it out anyway but it's just an example there then we have TM40 Aerial Ace. This isn't an amazingly helpful move for Crawdont, but, you know, you, you, it's a possibility to have. Aerial Ace is not a very powerful move. It's only 60 base power, if I remember correctly. So it's not amazingly powerful. Obviously, we don't get stab on it or anything, but it does have that 100% accuracy, which could come in helpful every now and again, especially if you're up against a double teamer or something along those lines. Obviously, it's not that common if you're playing by Smogon rules and whatnot, but Aerial Ace could still come helpful every now and again. Then we have HMO5 Waterfall. Now, Another powerful water type move. This can, you know, inflict flinches every now and again. I like waterfall to, you know, I like running waterfall on my Crawdon over Crab Hammer because just, I just prefer the move. It's personal preference as well, uh, especially with the flinches. If you're gonna get some hacks off, flinch can definitely help you out there. I mean, it could be the side of the game if you get a flinch, uh, and I'll, whereas they, if they hadn't flinched, they would then kill you, sort of thing. So, I do like waterfall over Crab Hammer. Then moving on to the egg moves, the first one we have is Aqua Jet. So, obviously, another choice for your water type move there. Aqua Jet can be run alongside Waterfall or Crab Hammer as well, because there's a priority move, and that does fix Crawdaunt's low speed stat, because it allows you to go first all the time. So, if you get Swords Dance up, and then you can Aqua Jet through the whole team, pretty much, and of course, 
depending on what the team is. So crawl on mainly based for um, an end of game sweep when you when you've sort of eliminated some of the threats there. If you've got rid of the bulky ones or the ones that resist water types, you can get Sword Stones up and Aqua Jet the rest of the way through the game pretty much. But obviously, all dependent on what type of team you get, what type of team you going up against. Then another egg move we have here is Double Edge. This is going to be a pretty powerful move. It does give you recoil, however, which is any downside to it. So that's why you don't see it too much. But it is pretty powerful to use as well. Um, and you know, just another alternative if, in case you're going up against something that resists dark or water type moves. Then we have a third egg move, which is Dragon Dance. Again, Dragon Dance is an egg move, which is pretty cool. Um, and that is going to boost an attack. A bit, well, put your attack up by one, one stat, one stat boost, whatever, and put your speed up as well. So whereas Swords Dance gives you a plus two boost in attack, Dragon Dance gives you one in each. So it can actually help remedy that low speed. Obviously, you need at least two Dragon Dances up to be reliable on that speed, but it is certainly an option to use. Then a final egg move, or indeed a tutor move, in a Mega Ruin Alpha Sapphire, we have Super Power, which is a power fight to move. When used, it does lower your attack and your defense though, so it might be something to watch out for. It's powerful, and it can help you cover some moves you don't you some types you wouldn't usually hit, but of course, the attack and defense drops are indeed gonna sort of affect it in the in the long term effect. Well, you can't just use it over and over again. You have to think about using it and then switching out or just using it as a last ditch attempt to get some more damage off before you, you get killed yourself. So those are the highlight moves, all physical or status, all based on offense really. There's nothing here about defensiveness or stalling or whatnot. The only thing we have, the only two status moves are short sword dance and dragon dance and the rest are physical moves. So you can tell Crawdon is definitely an offensive Pokemon. So let's move on to the competitive sets here. We're going to have two for Crawdon. One of them is going to be a choice band set and the second one is going to be a life orb set. So we'll start off with the choice band. So moveset set here is going to be knockoff or superpower. Then we have waterfall or crab hammer. Aqua Jet and then Crunch or Night Slash. Ability is going to be Adaptability because that's the best ability it has. Nature here is Adamant and a Held Item is a Choice Band. EVs are putting maximum attack, maximum speed, and the rest in defense. So, obviously, Choice Band set, so we have to have offensive moves in all the slots. The first one, Knock Off or Super Power. If you want to run Knock Off just to use to maybe knock off their items if they have a particularly annoying item or whatnot, um, you could run that or you can run Super Power for the extra coverage is the option there. Then we have Waterfall or Crab Hammer. As I said, that's really up to you which one you choose. I prefer Waterfall, but that's my personal preference. Uh, and then we have Aqua Jet. I've put Aqua Jet here because a Choice Band Aqua Jet is fairly powerful. And obviously, you, d you don't want to send your Pokemon out and get you know, faced against something that's got very, pretty high speed or reasonably high speed. Say it's almost close to death. Say you have, I don't know what, you, what, what Pokemon you'd get. Say, say it's a Stunfisk, okay? Completely hypothetical. Say it's a Stunfisk. It's going to be able to Thunderport you out. Say you're on low health too. It's going to be able to Thunderbolt you out if you don't get in there first, so Aqua Jet is going to save your ass on that occasion. It really depends on the situation, but I do like running my Aqua Jet there, just in case you come up in that sort of situation, and if you don't have Aqua Jet, you're going to obviously lose your Pokemon, whereas you do, you're going to win. Then we have a Crunch or Night Slash as the last slot, as your main Dark type option. Obviously, if you're running Knockoff in the first slot, you could think, okay, I'm not going to use it at all, i put Double Edge in the last slot, but I prefer having Crunch or Night Slash as a main main Dark type attacking move to do a lot of damage with. Crunch being the more powerful of the two, but Night Slash having the critical hit ratio, if you want to go for a bit of, uh, bit of hacks there. But, as I said, Knockoff is a reasonably powerful move, it's almost as powerful as Crunch or Night Slash, exactly, um, so, so funnily enough. So you could just run Knockoff there and have Super Power in the last slot if you really wanted to. The thing to watch out with Super Power though is, it's a choice banner set, so you can't just go Super Power and then, you know, hit off on another move or whatever, whatever. You have to Super Power and then probably just switch out right after that, so really it depends on where you go in there. But we have an Adamant Nature, just because we want to get all the power off, we want to have maximum attack, we want to have the, the highest attack we can to get the most damage off, especially if you plan on spamming Aqua Jets because you don't need a Joy Nature for that, what's the point? Um, so you may as well Aqua Jet and then just Choice Band, you know, <laughs> Aqua Jet, Adamant Nature, Choice Band, maximum attack in EVs. You're only, definitely going to go first unless they have another priority move there, um, and you're going to have the maximum attack you could, so adaptability there as well is another option. So that's pretty much it for that set there. It's a choice band set, and as I say for most choice band sets, it's a basic case of go in, use the best move there, and switch out when you need to, pretty much. So, let's have a look at the second set. The new set here I've got is Dragon Dance or Swords Dance, I'll talk about this in a minute, Waterfall, Crunch, and then Superpower or Aqua Jet. Ability-wise, we have Adaptability, Nature we have Adamant or Jolly, and then a held item here is a Life Orb, but you could also have an Expert Belt in there. I do like running an Expert Belt every now and again rather than a Life Orb, and obviously we'll talk more about that in a second. 
EV wise, again, it's the same maximum attack, maximum speed, the rest in defense. So moveset here, we have Dragon Dance or Sword Dance, so we have a choice of one of the dances. This relates to both the nature and the final move, so if you're running Dragon Dance, that's going to be boosting your attack and your speed. So generally, you can run an Adamant Nature because you don't need to be as fast, bit on, uh, sort of base-wise, and then you can run Superpower rather than Aqua Jet, because if you have your speed boosted, you don't particularly need Aqua Jet because the speed boost is going to be enough, or if you get one or two speeds boosts up, it's going to be enough to outspeed a fair amount of Pokemon, so you don't really need that Aqua Jet. So you can run superpower instead and just get some more power off. And obviously once you've used one superpower, your attack is going to drop down to its base where it was, where, where it was to begin with. But your speed's going to stay up. So you can still then carry on going for a waterfall or crunch. And you're not going to be that hindered. Obviously your defense has dropped, but that's something else to think about. If you're running Swords Dance, that's going to give you a plus 2 in attack, but it's not going to increase your speed. So that's why we have a Jolly Nature, and we have Aqua Jet there. You could say I'm going to run Adamant, have Aqua Jet, and focus on using Aqua Jet there, depending on the Pokemon, of course. Um, or you could just go Jolly and Aqua Jet. Basically, if you've got the Swords Dance up, that's plus 2 attack, and you can Aqua Jet as much as you want. You're going to be the fastest, unless they've got a priority move of their own. And obviously, generally... That's going to do a lot of damage with your sword stance, especially if you can get more than one up, because that's going to be very powerful indeed. However, this time, we don't have the speed boost, so a joy nature is preferred there to give you that sort of base speed boost there, just to increase it a bit more, uh, and allow you to actually use waterfall or crunch if you need to, because if you get a Pokemon that comes out as a grass type, you can't use Aqua Jet particularly, so you have to rely on crunch, so really sometimes the joy nature might come in helpful. As I said, it's a life orb with held item, because then you can, you know, if you have a dragon dance or a sword stance life orb, with an Aqua Jet and adaptability, it's going to be very powerful indeed. But the other option I said was Expert Battle. Now I like using an Expert about my Crawdaunt because, say we're gonna, we've Dragon Danced, okay? We've Dragon Danced twice, we've got plus 2 attack, plus 2 speed. We're gonna outspeed the opponent, say it's a Fire type. We've got Waterfall, which is a fairly powerful move, we're on plus 2 attack, we have Adaptability Stab, which is going to give us 2 times on that Waterfall, and we have an Animate Nature, for example, um, and we've got an Expert Belt. Expert Belt is going to power up because it's super effective, so we have plus 2 attack, adaptability stab, adamant nature, expert belt boost, that fire type is gone. That's why I like using the expert belt there, because if you get to use a move against a Pokemon that's weak to it, it's going to do a hell of a lot more damage. It's going to do a hell of a lot more damage, and it really will make a difference. I like using expert belt just for those little moments where you get you know, the right Pokemon against the right Pokemon. And you just completely destroy them. Whereas Life Orb would have given you a bit of a boost, but not as much a boost as Expert Belt would have. Because I think I can't remember the exact sort of stats of what the Expert Belt does, but I think instead of it makes it instead of doing two times damage to a Pokemon, it gives three times damage. I think it is at least, or maybe two point five times if it's super effective and whatnot. So really, I do love using the Expert Belt. Uh, super super effect attacks are 20 times stronger, or 20 20 percent stronger. 20 times stronger? Hell no! 20 percent stronger. So instead of doing, you know, so you've got 1.5 or two times on your stab, you've got uh, two times on stab, 20 percent on that, which is another oh I'll do mass on mass on studio, which is 240 um, percent of your, what it would do basically. You're on plus two attack, which gives you double 480 percent of what you do basically. Plus the adamant nature boost and plus the EV max maximum E boost is going to do a hell of a lot of damage, guys. So that's why I like running the expert belt. It just really boosts up the moves and sort of gives you that extra boost to take some Pokemon out. But that's really it for Crawdon, guys. As I said at the start of the episode, please don't forget to vote down below whether you want to see Mag Cargo or Torquil covered next episode. And I've got some very exciting stuff for you to come in well, the rest of December, towards the end of December and the start of the new year. So please be sure to check that out and sort of tune in on Christmas Eve, which is when one of the episodes of Datadex is going up. Tune in on Christmas Eve to find out what I've got planned. But for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button down below and check out all the other series on Lumios that you're going to enjoy. But for now, I'll be seeing you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, my friends.